Hi, so in this tutorial, I'm going to run for a number of questions. You can see here, you can see I've got three questions affected all on RC circuit because the lecture was on RC circuit. So you can see the configuration here, RC circuit in series, back to this here, this switch for the charging and discharging of the, of the capacitor. So question one, if you want to look at the background for this, again, have a look at the lecture. Um, it's in section 4.4, so it's on system gain and time constant. That's effectively what um, this tutorial is on in lecture 4 on RT circuit. However, you will need to be aware of some of the, the earlier equations and possibly some of the workings. So in this question, the time solution for the charge of an RC circuit is given by this. So the voltage effectively across the capacitor is equal to 5 and then in brackets, one take away this exponential term to power of minus t, which t is for your time, divided by two. So based on that, that's, there is your time solution for the resistor capacitor circuit. Determine the following. So the system gain and the time constant. And then sketch the graph for the time solution for the charging AC circuit. So if I look at this, so to determine the system gain and time constant. So the system gain, the general notation is generally used, well, not, is used as K, which in this case, our system gain is V subscript in. Where V subscript in, if you remember from the notation, well, you remember from the general form, obviously this here has got numbers substituted into it. Next question, you'll see the general form. But this here effectively is your V in. So here our system gain is effectively a value of five. Oh, there I've just added V because it's effectively um, it's effectively your five volts. So the volt the V subscript in is a value of five, and that there is five um, volts. The time constant is again, if you remember, is effectively this here, where your time constant was equal to R multiplied by C resistor value multiplied by the capacitor value. So in this case, a value of two has been given. For a um, resistor capacitor circuit, what's happening is over as the potential difference is applied, the effectively the capacitor will charge up. So the potential difference, so the voltage in, will charge up, or the capacitor will effectively charge up, such as the voltage out of the capacitor, these two will become equal. Okay, so if you're effectively, in this case, applying five, well, your, your voltage in is, is five volts, that means your voltage out in terms of the capacitor will, will charge up to five volts. So what your system gain tells you is effectively the final value of the system when the system is in steady state. Or when I mean system, I mean the resistor capacitor circuit. And I'll explain that a little bit more. So what we can do is when we're looking at a graph now, so if we're looking at now the second part, this table here has effectively two columns that you need to be aware of and a number of values. So here you can see time constant, five time constant, where one time constant is resistor capacitor. And in this case, we've just determined the value is a value of two. Okay, F therefore five time constant, which is just five multiplied by resistor capacitor, is gonna give a value of 10. So this column here is my response time. And this here corresponds to, so think of this being like, you know, on a graph, it's your X axis. This corresponds to this time, so two seconds and 10 seconds, corresponds to your output amplitude here. And it's as a fraction of YSS, where YSS here I told you effectively is equal to the voltage in, the voltage out, which is effectively just your system gain here. So it's a fraction of YSS, where YSS is, is effectively given by a value of five. Right, so this here is a standard just like these are standards, so um, this here, one time constant, five time constant, these correspond all the time to these values here. 
So 0 0.632 multiplied by effectively the, the final, that, well, the output of the system in steady state or the RT circuit in steady state. So SS just stands for steady state. And that just means when effectively you can see it's divided in two bits. Here, the effectively the capacitor is charging. And at this point here, it's already fully charged and there's no further charge taking place. And that's where you're known as being in steady state. This region here is transient, where effectively you're getting change with with the with effectively the capacitor because it's charging. So 0 0.632 multiplied by the final value of the system. So in this case, 0 0.632 multiplied by 5, because obviously we've determined that V in is equal to V out, which is equal to YSS, which YSS is 5, which is going to give us a value of 3.16. So we know at two seconds the output amplitude is 2.16 that's effectively going to be volts because that's telling us how charged up the capacitor is at 10 seconds that gives us 0 0.990 multiplied by the final value which if you just work out that the product of that is 4.95 so after five time constant which is 10 seconds the capacitor is going to be charged up to 4.95 volts and if we look at that on a graph here you can see time constant is equal to 2, 5 time constant is equal to 10, which these values here just correspond to time, so 2 seconds and 10 seconds. Then if we look at the y-axis, we've got V subscript C here, so the voltage across the capacitance. After 2 time constant, we're at 3.16 volts, so it's just determined. And at 5 time constants, we're going to be at 5.96 volts. Five time constants is pretty much sufficient for it to say we're pretty much fully charged. So it's normal kind of for you to kind of when you think about it, in this case, an RC circuit or any system that we're using to model with a, with, a, with a time solution that looks like this. You can say pretty much after five time constant, the system is effectively in steady state. So you can see it's close enough. Um, where obviously the final value of the system actually is in fact five. So in terms of determining this, I, you can see here I've, in the lecture I went, I had, I think it was one time constant, three time constant, five time constant, ten time constants. For me, it's sufficient just to use one time constant and five time constant and then deter, determine the output amplitude of those two values for those time constants. So in question two, we now have the time solution for the charging of an RC circuit. But we have it in the standard form. So the voltage over the capacitor is equal to V in. So the voltage in. And then brackets 1 take away E to the power of minus T over RC. So our resistor capacitor. Resistor capacitor given by values of 470 ohms and 0 0.1 microfarad. And the input voltage denoted Vn is 9 volts. So if we determine, first of all, the same... As the previous question, determine the system gain time constant and then effectively sketching the graph for the time solution of the charging RC circuit. What we need to first of all determine is the system gain and the time constant. So in this case, the system gain again is K, which is equal to the voltage in, which in this case is a value of 9. Okay, so 9 volts is the voltage into effectively this resistor capacitor circuit. The time constant. Is always the same, so it's the time constant is equal to resistor multiplied by the capacitor, in this case 470 multiplied by 0 0.1, and then it's micro, so it's 10 to the power of minus 6. And then the value we're going to get for the time constant is 4.7 times 10 to the power of minus 5, so it's quite a small value. Recall that voltage in is equal to voltage out for a resistor capacitor circuit for a direct for a DC circuit and that's effectively equal to the final value of the system or the, the output value of the RC circuit when it's in steady state. So again recall this table where time, one time constant here, five time constant here, in this case one time constant is equal to this number here that we've just determined and then five time constant is five multiplied by that number which in this case is 2.35 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Again, as we saw in the previous question, these align to these values here. So where 0 0.632 multiplied by the final value of the system in steady state, 
and 0 0.990 multiplied by again the value this the the RC circuit when it's in steady state which in this case is you can just see now this number here because if you recall YSS here is equal to the voltage in which in this case in these examples is a value of 9 so 9 multiplied by that number 9 multiplied by that number is going to give us 5.67 so after one time constant we're at 5.67 volts at five time constants we're at 8.91 volts and we know that the system gain here is 9 volts and the voltage in is equal to the voltage out for the capacitor so we know here that obviously 8.91 is not too far away from the capacitor being fully charged so if we look at this on a graph here where you can see um, here you've got your output here so your voltage out and here you'll see your time constant five time constant so the time values and at one time constant you'll see the output amplitude given here so 5.67 and then you'll see here at obviously your five time constant you'll see you've got a value of 8.91 volts and obviously when the system is fully settled in steady state as you can see here denoted by this you can see now you've got a value of 9 volts so what this graph here is representing is just the charging up of the resistor capacitor circuit where just remember voltage in is equal to voltage out and once the system is in steady state here YSS effectively the voltage in is equal to the voltage out so the capacitor is fully charged in question three this is basically a follow-on question from question two so the time solution for the charging and discharge of an RSA circuit is given by these two equations so you would have seen these in the lecture so this first one here is for the discharging and this second one here you've seen on the previous two um, questions for the charging and you've also seen in the lecture in this question I've used the same capacitor and resistor values that were used in question two and the same input voltage is used for so nine volts the only variation in this question is this particular part so the input voltage is applied to the RC circuit for five seconds at t is equal to five the voltage is removed okay so just think effectively the voltage being applied for five seconds so that's going to charge up the capacitor we then remove the voltage and the capacitor the voltage across the capacitor is going to discharge so based on the above determine the following so the system gain and the time constant so these were actually in fact determined in question two and you can see these down here so system gain nine volts and then the time constant here so we have those then sketch the graph for the time solution for the charging and discharging rc circuit so again what you do have is the graph for the charging so you've got the value here for one time constant five time constant and how this corresponds to the different voltages and then you've got the final value of obviously the voltage when it's in steady state the only difference is what you'll notice is the input here volt v in is actually removed here and i haven't put five there but i'll add five there it's removed at t is equal to five so you can see here that effectively the removal of the voltage so then it becomes a value of zero then the output voltage here you can see discharges and that's effectively the voltage across the capacitor discharging and that it kind of the response time is effectively the the inverse of this so if it's taken i don't know that time to approximately that time to charge up it'll take that time to discharge so after two time constants oh sorry after one time constant you'd expect the discharge to be at 63.2 percent so if you remember back to the lecture to um one time constant refers to six for effectively the charging of 63.2 percent and also the discharging of 63.2 percent and after five time constants it's 99 percent charged and it's also 99 percent discharged so effectively this curve here is just like the inverse of it so that pretty much concludes the tutorial if you have any questions please feel free to contact me thank you